There's not a lot of arm strength there. There's a lot of strain on the elbow. Now what if I told him to do this? Loosen up, loosen up. Loosen your, now come forward. Now turn it. So now he's in a position to where, what looks more natural? Here's where you, here's where you blow. What looks more natural? That or that. So there's three steps to this. You throw it first, then you turn it, then you pull it in. Did you see how I cushioned his elbow there for him? Okay, if I hook here early and extend, now look at that. Can't you just see that with your own eyes? What looks more natural? So it's three steps. Throw it, turn it, and pull it. Now, when you stick his arm out and you say, oh, well, what is this going to be, a curveball? So look here, here's what happens. If you, pit, if you get a pitcher and you stick his arm straight out, and then I bend him in a little bit, then I tell him to turn it. You go ahead and turn your hand. Okay? That's a small break. If I turn it in a little more, turn your hand. Now the break's getting a little bigger. Now I pull it in here and turn your hand. You think the break's going to get bigger? The less you pull in, the smaller the break, and the more you pull in, the bigger the break. And in that three-step breaking ball, which is a throw, turn, and pull in, you're cushioning your elbow. Not only that, you're putting yourself in a hell of a power position for that breaking ball. And basically, it's going to improve his velocity on a breaking ball. Sorry, I used that term. I hate it's going to improve the life. Got it? It's going to improve the life on his breaking ball. And I don't care if it's small, big, in between, or what. As long as he's, he's, got, he's got something that's turning the corner, and he's taking care of his elbow. So basically, you want to tell the pitcher, when you come through, try to have your palm facing the hitter at the top before you do what you want to do with it. So, so in other words, you want to get in the position to do this. Wham, wham, wham. Here you go, fastball, boom, 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 breaking ball, boom, 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 change, boom, boom, boom. You see what I mean? Instead of, oh, what is your fastball? Oh, see that? Fastball, oh, shit. Breaking ball, oh, God, you know? And you, how many times have you seen pitchers do what I just did right there in those last two moves? Well, look how hard that is on your body, on your arm, and every damn thing, and on the manager, on everything else. But if you do, if you do your alignment with your fastball and a throw, turn, and pull with your breaking ball, then you're going to make it easier on yourself in two ways. Three of the good things are going to happen. Fastball command, cushion your elbow on a breaking ball, and develop a nice breaking ball. Now on your changeup, you throw a changeup too? Okay, now, I would suggest on a changeup, he's got a little bit of a circle change there. Okay, that's fine. But he has the whole ball, he is not gripping any seams. I would have you throw that circle change, but the seams would be on his two middle fingers so that it comes off. You have more control of the ball when you're not on the slick part. He's got a, I like his grip on the change because it, it's not choked in, and if he throw, you're going to have more of a fastball spin if you use the seams on a baseball. The, the seams are on a baseball. You're doing good, see? The seams are on a baseball to use them. Now, if you want to throw a spinner, then don't use the seams. But if he's going to throw a circle change, which I think he has a great grip on it, well, instead of, instead of not having his whole hands not touching any seams, I've got his thumb on a seam. I've got his two middle fingers on a seam. He's almost touching it right there and almost touching it right there. Now, if you have a hold of the seams, don't you think it would be easier to control than being on the slick part? So now you've got fastball alignment, breaking ball, throw, throw, turn, and pull, and a changeup with seams. Now, what's your approach on the changeup? When you're teaching a changeup, what do you try to do? When you're teaching a changeup, say you're, what do you, what, what do you tell them as, what's the approach on the change? What's that? Oh, just like a Absolutely. And here's what I would also what I would add to that. The least amount you can take off and still be effective. 
The least amount. And quit trying to keep the damn thing down. Just throw a good change up. The least amount you can take off and still be effective. Why? Because that promotes arm speed, that promotes action on a pitch, and it promotes, you know, you're not, you're not, you're, it may be up a little bit, but you're not going to hang it. There's a difference between a hanging change up and a change up that has action and only and it ain't lower than low. So on your change up, it's the least amount you take off and still be effective. On your change up, oh, here's what I want to tell you guys. You got your alignment on your fastball, right? A little bit over here, a little bit over here. In other words, if, and if you're in the stretch, and you're, you're, you're getting your alignment, all you have to do is see where his shoulder is, and if you're aiming a gun at somebody, see if he's aiming it to right where the hell he's going. And with your bottom half, you, you keep it level, even. Okay? I have a stretch. So you have your alignment on your fastball, and you do the same thing with your straight change. That means that you can use your straight change a little more than just this pitch over here, this pitch over here. On your breaking ball, everything's straight. Everything's straight. On your alignment, everything is straight. Now, okay, you're done. You're very good. Hey, good luck. You're going to be good. Okay, so we're, we're making a full circle here. Fastball, breaking ball, change. Now, how do we acquire this? How do we learn how to do this? By throwing more often with less exertion. So it makes a full circle back the other way. You throw it more often with less exertion. Now, in your delivery, remember this. When you're throwing your pitches and you're going downhill on the mound, <clears throat> if your butt goes down, the ball goes up. If your butt stays up, the ball goes down. Can you visualize that? You're coming through, coming, you've you're got your alignment, you're coming straight to your target. Butt goes down, ball comes up. Butt stays up, ball goes down. With your head, if your head goes down, the ball comes up. If your head stays up, so you can see where the hell you're throwing the ball, the ball goes down. Butt down, ball up. Butt up, ball down. Head down, ball up. Head up, ball down. Simple mechanics, nothing major here. This ain't rocket science. And, these, this, and look, I'm telling you the same thing. You're, you're here in a typical bullpen session that we had for anywhere from the John Rockers to the Hall of Famers to the, and to the East Cop All-Star kids, teenage All-Stars. It's the same conversation. Coaching is, 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 is the same. Now, here's the other thing. In the stretch, that's a bunch of crap that is. Look, you ever see guys do this? Huh? What is that? You want to unload quicker to the plate? Is that what it is? Try to, you know, why not? How about this? Let me let me give you an example. He's left-handed. Okay, I've got my alignment right. I've got my alignment. I'm going to throw this fastball. And there's there's my arm slot right. I'm going to let my ass leap to third base. What did I just do with my arm? It went down, didn't it? I didn't move it. It went down with my body. So now I've completely flattened the angle on the pitch. And now I'll have to do this. Come down, then come back up, and then try to go. All right? Right-handed right -handed pitchers. If, if their butt goes toward first, here's my arm slot. What did I just do? I brought my arm angle to a flat position. And I didn't go like this, up or down. So why don't you just stand up? Come up, set, relax, ass underneath you. Have your base underneath you. Come up, set, relax. Okay? And then just unload. Here's the other thing. If you look at, come up in the stretch, right? I always like to have the glove. This is the back of my glove hand facing the hitter. If I'm right-handed, this face, when I come to my, I don't want to hear, I want down here, I don't want all this bullshit. You know why? Or once again, it gets back to arm injuries. Anytime you can free yourself up. For example, what's this? If I, if I, if I say, if I'm in like this, now when I come out of my glove, see where my, well, see where my arm's dropping out? It's dropping out toward shortstop a little, the shortstop side of second base. Okay, now I've got to recover completely from there Bingo. What if I was just like this? 
Does that look easier on your arm? My arm's going to come out towards second base, whether I'm left-handed or right-handed. If I got my, my glove here, I'm upset and relaxed, bingo. All these things are little things that, that help take care of arm problems. So what looks more natural? This, that, or this, that, or... It's a lot easier, isn't it? It's a lot easier. So there's another thing to go. You, you've kept it very simple. Your feet on the mound. You ever go up to a guy and he's, he's like this on the mound? You ever go up to him and push him and see if he can hold his ground? If you can't hold his ground, his feet are too close. And you just want to basically be shoulder width. That's out of the stretch. With your alignment. These are simple mechanical things. 